we're going to kind of take a jump backwards. Instead of talking about those four types of publishing that we mentioned in the previous video, we're going to focus just on electronic publishing, which is the preparation of graphic material in preparation for a printed output, but we use computers as opposed to using film or traditional analog processes. And when we talk about uh, electronic publishing, we talk about the idea of prepress and how that's possible because we have, or electronic prepress, and how that's possible because we have computers. So I want to focus on the bottom half of the slide for a second, so you can keep reading through the top part if you want to, but I'm going to focus on the bottom where it says the print production stages. And so R1200 focuses on pre-press kind of from the graphic designer's point of view, everything to create your artwork up through saving, pre-flighting, packaging, and then sending it to a printing company. Um, the print production process or the steps that your project would go through once it gets to a commercial printer so that you could actually print it and have something um, include pre-press, press, and finishing. So it's a three-step process and they're kind of really broad terms. Um, we'll go through what it means for each stage in a second. But what's important is that the cusp between how you finish your artwork as a graphic designer and you hand it off to a printing company and they are going to uh, they're going to prep your file in the pre-press stage of production. That cusp is what we're going to talk about in this class. So everything up through creating it and handing it off to a commercial printer. And then once the commercial printer gets your files, if you want to learn more about what happens to your files in detail and how it would um, be formatted for the printing press, printed on the printing press, and then finished in some way, um, that's what our 1135 printing fundamentals picks up. And so between those two classes, your InDesign software class and your printing fundamentals class, you will cover all of the steps that are necessary to create artwork and prepare it for commercial printing and then to take the commercial artwork that has been given to you by a graphic designer, prepare it for the printing press, output printing plates, print it on a printing press, and then finish it in some way, make it into a book or something like that. And so I just want to emphasize that between these two classes, you're going to get all of that information. And so that's why we recommend that you take Art 1135 and Art 1200 at the same time um, here at Salt Lake Community College. Pre-press is the first stage in the print production process, and that's kind of the stage that we're kind of going to bridge the gap between printers and graphic designers. And I've broken it down into six steps, not because these are like official steps or they're, you know, set in stone, but I think lists are kind of easier to break down information. And so before I start and explain what each step is, I just want to emphasize that the pre-press process is kind of like a fluid process and every printing company is going to have a different um, set of steps or processes that they, that they use. There's going to be common themes and that's how I've broken it down here, but the, the specifics are going to kind of be specific to um, the printing company that you send your file to. And so the six steps that I kind of break them down into are st stage one or step one, your pre-flight process. So the very last thing that you do as a graphic designer before you hand files over to a commercial printer is you pre-flight, save, package, export, etc. The first thing that the printing company is going to do is repeat exactly what you just did. They're going to take your files and they're going to pre-flight it. And they're going to make sure that all the things that you would need to recreate that file on a printing press are present, accounted for, and appropriate. In addition to that, they could do some proofreading, that, but that's kind of like an, a dated term, or it's not really a dated term, but a dated process. And um, right now, we kind of don't do a lot of proofreading in the printing industry because there are softwares that will do that for you. And so if you wanted something proofread by a printing company like in 2017, you would probably have to specifically ask for that, or they would kind of do a general proofread, but they're not going to go line by line, word by word, which in the past they would have. They would have done that in the 80s or the 70s or the 60s when you were sending physical packages to them instead of digital packages. In addition to some minor proof, um, proofreading and pre-flighting, um, the person who is going to do this first stage is called a pre-flight artist. They're kind of like the low man on the totem pole. They can do some basic editing and some basic layout modifications, but they're not going to do much. Like if they recognize that you have the wrong files or your images are all in RGB, they can make a note of that. Um, they could even um, swap out the color modes for you if you wanted to, but a lot of times the, the first stage is just to recognize that everything is there and accounted for, and if it's missing or it needs modifications, they usually send it back to the customer and say, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to fix it or do you want to fix it yourself? Stage two is out of all of the stages, probably the most dated of them. Um, in the past, uh, before we had computers, or even when we had computers, but the computers couldn't, um, 
couldn't create artwork that was of the level of a film photograph, um, the pre-press department would scan a lot of photos. And so you would have something called an FPO, four position only image or box on your layout and say, right there, I wanna put this very specific picture and I'm going to mail that picture to you and I want you to take the physical picture and scan it and put it into my project. And uh, I can't scan it myself because I don't have a high quality scanner. And so we don't really do that so much anymore because a lot of images are captured with digital cameras or um, people have scanners that can scan high quality images. They're not just reserved for printing companies anymore. In addition, we used to create physical color separations in the pre-press process where you would use film film and you would expose the film and you would create a color separation so you take your image and you would divide it into four channels of color cyan, magenta, yellow and black, the four printing process colors and unlike the color separations we make which are black and white to represent density of color these would be on film so they're transparent and they would be literally the color cyan, the color magenta, the color yellow and the color black and then once they are created you would lay them one on top of another to get a representation of how your image would look as a four color process separation. And we would do that to kind of get an idea of what to expect when we print it out on the printing press. We don't really make color separations too much anymore because we can um, test a lot of things on screen that we need and then when we want to look at the color per se because you can't test color on the screen. Um, we can make color proofs and as part of the proofing process the quality of proofs are much higher than they used to be and so we can use like digital uh, wide format printers called proofing machines to print a proof. Um, in addition, the pre-press department can do color corrections and so they could do color corrections in the sense that you want to change the color of something but you don't know how to. So if we go back to our example with the umbrella, um, you have this image and it has a blue umbrella but you want it to be red because you're designing something for Coca-Cola. Um, you would say, I would like you to change that and people in pre-press should have the skill set to be able to do that back to where I was at. But you could also do color corrections to uh, account for the color of the paper you're printing on. And so if you're printing on kind of a yellow sheet of paper, um, you can adjust all the colors in your document to have less yellow so that when you apply it to the sheet of paper, the yellow is filled in by the yellow paper. You could also have some images where you think, well, this is just a little too kind of um, cool or blue in color and you want to add some warmth to it, but you don't know how to do that. You can ask the the pre-press department to do that for you. All of these things would be at a cost. I'm not just going to do it for free, but they could do it for you. And they would know the right way to do it to make it look nice when it prints on the printing press. Stage three, the printing company will convert your files to the proper files needed for your output. And this doesn't mean that you gave them JPEGs, which are web file formats, and they're going to convert them to TIFFs, which are a print file format. They would do that kind of in the first stage of the pre-press process. But what it means is that if they need a specific file format for their printer or printing press, um, they will convert it to their needs. And one of the things that uh, happens a lot is when you have specific digital equipment, um, there are only certain files that will work. And so, for example, in our classroom, we have a VersaCam, Roland VersaCam printer plotter. It's a wide format, solvent-based printer that prints like banners and things like that. You have to use special software to print to it. It's called Roland VersaWorks. And the only two file formats that you can upload and use in that software are either an EPS file format or a PDF file. And so if you gave me properly packaged InDesign project, I'd be okay with that because we receive them all the time. But I wouldn't be able to load that into that piece of equipment. So before I do anything else, I would move it over to the proper file format. Um, in addition, they can do different things with your files. So if you're printing a booklet and it has 400 pages, the way that you design it is going to be in what are called reader spreads, where you design page 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and you see that when you have the finished book, page 6 will be next to page 7, or 1, page 2, 3, 4, 5, yep, page 6 will be next to page 7, etc. And you're kind of designing it from the reader's perspective. But when you print something, you have to print it from the printer's perspective. And what they do is they create printing impositions. And so they take one big piece of paper that can fit eight uh, pages of the book on the front of the sheet. And then if you flip it over, you can fit eight on the back. And then if you fold it and you fold it again, you can create what's called a signature. But in order for the signature to have the pages in the right order and the pages facing the right direction, etc., you have to figure out that page one goes in the bottom left hand corner and it's right side up. And page two goes on the back behind that. And then page three is next to that and it's upside down and, and different things like that. And so they'll create an imposition that your files need to be dropped into. But the InDesign document that you gave them is 400 pages and they only want to drop one page at a time 
into the different holes in the template or the imposition. And so what they'll do is they might export all of your pages as PDF files so that they're high resolution PDF files. You have one document for every page in your template and then they're numbered. And so you go to the imposition template and you drop page one where page one goes and you drop page 400 where page 400 goes, etc. And so if they need to do any of this, they will do that as part of their prepress process. Also as part of stage three, which isn't written here, they would create what's called a printing imposition. And so if you're printing like one big poster that's 24 inches by 36 inches on a press sheet, it would just have one big, one big poster. But you might be printing 45 bookmarks on the same size press sheet, and so you figure out how many up it you'll see, if there's different colors or different copies, you, you lay it out. And they would do that in this third stage, and they'd basically be ready to make printing plates, but they'll stop because they don't want to make crates until you approve it, and that's where stage four comes into play. And so stage four is proofing and approval. So once they're ready to make plates, and, and in theory they could make plates and be on press, they're going to stop and they're going to make proofs for you so that you can take a look at what to expect when the job is on the printing press. And so proofing is creating a copy of your project, usually through digital means, because that's what we do in 2017, um, that you could take a look at and you could look at it for the wording and the pictures to make sure it's the right words and the right pictures in the right places. Then you can also look at it for color depending on the type of proof and you can get an idea of what to expect on the printing press. Now there's lots of different types of proofs like you can have a proof that's not for color that's just for the imposition of how things are going to line up next to each other and we usually call that a blue line proof because it used to be blue but it's not blue anymore but when you print it it's just printed really fast on a digital printer and you can't look at it for the color you just have to look at it for like the words and the placements and then you can have a color copy where you should look at it and say okay her shirt is red and it's supposed to be red and his his pants are blue and they're supposed to be blue um, you can even have really high level um, color proofs that 99.9% .9 match the color that you should expect on the printing press. However you get your proofing, and we're not going to go into details about the proofing just yet, but however you get your proofing, when you have approved what the printing company is doing, you will approve the proofs either through um, if you had soft proofing, which is proofing on a computer screen, you'll kind of email them back or you'll submit an approval through a software. Or a lot of the times if you have a physical proof, you hand write on it, you sign it and say I approve and it's ready to go and you date it. And once you have approved whatever the printing company has set up and they're ready to make plates for, then your job will get scheduled for press. And so in a printing company, we don't want to schedule you for time on press until everything's ready to go. Because if you don't show up ready to print on Thursday morning at 8 o'clock and you're scheduled for Thursday morning at 8 o'clock, the press won't run. And anytime the press is running, a printing company is losing money. So once you've been approved and you say everything's good to go, then a printing company will schedule you and figure out when you can be on press. And then once they know when you're going to be on press, they'll start to make plates and they'll quality control check those plates to make sure that you know they have the right color separations, they didn't accidentally output two cyan plates instead of a cyan and a magenta plate and that kind of thing. And then they'll get ready to run your job on press. Now after stage six, the next step would be to print it. And so that's where stage two of the print production cycle starts or the print production process and that would be printing on press. Now, to learn more about that, take the other class, Printing Fundamentals, because that's what's covered in that class.